the house of God has three things that make the house of God the house of God. One, the house of God must have an altar. Two, must have sacrifices. Three, must have offerings. If one of those are missing, it's not a house of God. What is it then? It's a house of men. This is powerful. It's a house of men. Okay, now I want you to understand. This is so powerful. The house of men has not an altar. What does he have? The house of men has a stage. And stage is used to perform. In other words, the altar is used to offer sacrifice unto God. The house of God also has priests. The house of men has stage, has one stage. And that what stage is for? That stage is to perform. In other words, every person that is coming into the house of men, you will see an actor. You will see an actor. Number two, this is important. The house of men has actors. The house of God has priests. So I want you to understand this is so powerful. So in the modern day church, the house of God has been replaced by the house of men. And the altar has been replaced by stage. The stage has replaced the altar. And that is used to perform. We are becoming Actors, stage actors, because so the church has becoming performing base oriented. In other words, we're not supplying the needs of the people. We come to act. I didn't come here to act. I'm a priest of God. So first of all, the way I dress, the way I talk, I come to the house of God because I understand my role as a priest. <laughs> Lift your hands and say, I am a priest of God of my almighty say i'm a priest of god almighty so this is important so we are in a serious time so the church the church needs to hear the father's uh heart toward the the altar in other words i don't believe not to give the altar call to the sinners but also to the church jesus rebuke um are the rebuke the seven churches the first church need to come back to the altar in other words god is giving the churches space and time to repent for bringing stages for to be performing in the church instead of offering god sacrifices of praise so god is is uh, i have to preach with indignation in my heart holy indignation because the altar of god has disappeared and the spirit of this age has used people to remove the altar of god oh this is so powerful this is so powerful and i'm going to say something very powerful i had to preach with real indignation because how, what is the condition what is the state of, of the condition of the altar in the, in, the, in, the, in the house of God. 1 King chapter 18 verse 30. And look at this. Uh, 1 King chapter 18 verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people. Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. That is the condition of the altar in the church today. We have stages, performers, actors, not priests. Not priests, not real sacrifices unto the Lord. My God, I feel the power of God here. As a result, there is no power, there is no presence, there is no prayer, there is no blessings, there is no fire in the church because the altar has been replaced by performers. Number two, 
I'm going to give you, and I want you to write this wisdom seed. The first thing that the devil steals from the church is the altar. I'm going to say it again. The first thing that the devil steals from the church is the altar. So I'm going to give you a powerful testimony. As I was ministering in one of the television network many years ago, there was a woman watching what I was preaching. And I was preaching on the altar and giving and the offering. I said that what makes the house of God, the house of God, are the altar, offerings, and sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices I'm, I'm referring to. And this woman came to the altar in her home and put an offering because the, when she went to the doctor, the doctor said to her, uh, you are about to give birth. You are nine months. You're ready to give birth. But we see in this uh, uh, test that, that your children is coming out, is coming out without legs. And she said, I ran to the altar. And I believe and I say, God, I give you a seed to thank you for the healing and for you to create new legs to my child. She said, I believe it. And, and she said she went back and she was ready to give birth in one week. And the doctor said to her, remember, you have two options. You either abort the child because it is coming out without legs or or, or, or you, 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 you receive it the way it's coming. So she said, I went to the altar. There's power on the altar. I went to the altar. I give God a sacrifice. I gave offering. Not buying the miracle. But as a way, I'm going to explain to you in a minute why the offering is so powerful. So she came to the altar. She gave it to the Lord. When she went back, she said, doctor, I take the risk. I believe I'm going to have my child because I offer my child. I present my child in the altar. She did it. And she said, the moment the birth came, she said, my child, my baby was fully complete with two legs. Wow. So the Lord created, oh my God, I wish you can help me, Ephesians. Two legs, two brand new legs. So is that miracles happen today? Yes, because people that understand the power of the altar. Come on, Jesus' name. So this is so powerful. Now, we understand. <clears throat> we understand the altars in the house of God have been uh, broken down. Even in the global church. That is the reason we enter in a new era. If you ask me. Why are you teaching this? The Holy Spirit said to me, I want you to teach on the altar for two reasons. One, he said, for the new Pentecost that is about to fall. The, the revival that is about to fall. And then he said, fire always comes on the altar first. So he said, the, the altars of the families, churches, uh, personal lives... They, will, they need to be restored to see that revival. Number two, he said, the reason I want, I want the, the, the altar to be restored is because he said, he said God says, I want to um, restore my relationship with my people. So in this moment of crisis, you can afford to be without your altar. You must repair your altar before God. So we understand the reason. Now, let's call the definition of what an altar is. So you understand what makes a house of God legal? Number two, what is an altar? An altar is the Hebrew word misbak. Misbak. And misbak means to the sacrificing place. Or the place where we offer sacrifices to God. I'm going to say it again. The altar is the place of sacrifice. It appears 370 times in the Bible. 
How come we erased the word altar and appears set 370 times in the Bible? The altar then is a place of sacrifice. Lift your hand and say sacrifice. So the altar in the Bible, I want you to write it down. The old in the in the in the altar. In the altar, the word altar in the, in the Bible. And, and listen to this. Can you fix that, please? The altar in the Bible times were made of earth and stone. Earth and stone found in the field, not to tool because they were used. In other words, it was raw. And I want you to see a picture of a stone that was took from the field. And it cannot be tool because if they did, it was profaned. They profaned the altar. No, the other one. Show me the other one. There was an altar of like, like, like uh, the stone, the one that I sent you first last two weeks. So listen to this. So you see it was made of stone. It was made of, of earth. Exodus chapter 20, verse 24 and 25. I want you to see the scriptures. Ancient altars were raised structures. An elevation or high place. Where God appeared. The altar was placed to approach. The altar was a place of approaching. A place to call upon the name of the Lord. And to remember his glorious promises. I'm going to say it again. The altar was a place to call upon the name of the Lord. The altar was a place as a memorial. For what God had done in that time. Number two. It was a remember. And number three was a place to call the name of the Lord. And look at this. The altar of earth of earth shall make unto me. And the child sacrifice therefore thy burn offerings and peace offering. And the sheep and thy oxen. In all places where I record my name. I call come upon thee and I will bless thee. Listen to me. I will bless thee. What is he saying? I will come in where you make your altar and I will, I will bless you. If you don't have no altar, you don't have no place where God will bless you. God wants to bless you financially. God wants to bless you physically. God wants to bless you divinely. Okay, so, so this is so powerful. Verse 25. So I want you to see. And, you, and, and then he said, and that you shall will make me an altar of stone. So the altar was made of earth and stone. And listen to this. This is so powerful. So in the Bible, describe the most sacred. This is the most sacred. In that stone, did you get the stone? Or you need to put me the other one if you don't have it. Oh, the stone, I want you to see something. Uh, please keep connected. And I want you to go to the scriptures. There, uh, I want you to keep connecting. Call somebody. I am talking about the restoration of the altar. The restoration. Your altar forgot to bless you. Forgot to release the fire in your life. You must have your altar in place. You must be aligned with God. So I want you to, if you're watching, please call somebody and keep connecting. So I want you to see Exodus chapter 25. So the altar was made of stone and earth. And, and listen to this. The Bible describes that the most sacred part. Of the altar were four horns. I want you to see it. Four horns and the altar, which symbolize, let's see the four horns, and that symbolize power and strength, power and might. The horns represent prophetically power. And might. So what does that mean? What, what it means is. The four. In the Hebrew. Numerology. Represents. The world. The four corners of the earth. 
And the, the horns represent power. So what God is saying is this. Listen to me. If you're watching at home, keep connecting. I want you to update the, the people that are connecting, please. I don't have to be telling you. I want you to see something so powerful. Look at, look at this. So the horns represent. This is what God is saying. I want you to look at the, at the altar. This altar for a moment. This is what God is saying. The four corners, the four horns, represent my power. And from this altar, I release my power to all over the world. If we don't have horns, if we don't have altars, we don't have power to release on the people. So God is saying, those altars, those horns, are the most sacred part of the altar. What does that mean? Exodus chapter 27, verse 2. I need to run. And, th and this is what is so powerful. So it says this. Can you fix this, please? Okay, so I want you to see that. Exodus chapter 27, verse 2. And you shall make the horns of it upon the four corners, therefore. His horns shall be on the same and yet so overlaid and with brass. What does that mean? What does that mean? The altar was a holy place. The altar has those four horns. The altar was a holy place, very significant, and was the place to offer sacrifices, worship, communion before the Lord. And this is, the altar was so sacred. Give, give it to me. Thank you. Thank you. The altar was so sacred. And this is so powerful. The altar was so sacred. was a place that God and man meet. So this is the definition. I want you to know. What the altar is. Is a sacrifice. The sacrifice in place. Number two. The altar has a sacred part. Which are the four horns. And that represents the power of God. That's what makes the church. The church. The church of God. Because if the power of God is not in the altar, it's not the house of God. This is so powerful. So I want you to know something powerful. That's what the reason is. When people had trouble, when people had crisis, they ran to get a hold of the horns of the altar. Because in the altar, there was protection. There was healing. There was blessing. So I want you today, those that are watching by the internet, you, if you have any crisis, if you have some issues, run to the altar. Run to the altar and, 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 and pour your life to the altar and worship and prayer and offering and giving to God. And say, God, I want to run to the altar. Altar. So this is so powerful. Then what is the def biblical definition of an altar? Write it down. The altar is the place where God meets men. In other words, the altar, a very simple definition, is the place where God meets men or God and men meet. And I'm going to say this is very powerful. In other words, a church without altar, there is no place to meet God. I'm going to say it again. The altar. I wish I can hear an amen from the Ephesians. Okay, I'm going to say it again. The altar is the place where God and man meet. Without an altar, there is no place for God to meet man or man to meet God. So this is so powerful. The altar is the place of, of where we can experience the reality of God. The altar is what Jesus called it a secret place. It's what Jesus called it the closet. It's what Jesus called it the place called there. Where, let me give you an example. I'm going to say it again. It's where God and man meets every day. It's where God and man, for example, my first encounter with the altar. 1988, July the 20th. I came to that church. I remember uh, um, the pastor started preaching and he started making the call to the altar. Today, we don't call the sinners to the altar because we are compromising the truth because we want to be acceptable. 
We think it's offensive to call a sinner to come to the altar. But today, we proclaim from the house of Jesus, King Jesus ministry, we proclaim that the altar is for the sinners to come and encounter God.